With something like alcohol, is there a metabolic effect in terms of like if someone is metabolically unhealthy, maybe they have high blood sugar, maybe they're insulin resistant, are they potentially more prone to being addicted? Is there a metabolic interplay? I put a link down below for 15% off of my preferred creatine company, which is called Create. They're creatine gummies. One thing you do need to know is that if you want to control water retention, that is a real thing with creatine, taking smaller doses throughout the day seems to be effective. When I had Dr. Darren Kando on this channel talking about creatine, we really did kind of get into that. And that seems to be an effective strategy. So taking five grams per day, but split at one to two gram intervals throughout the day. And these little gummies make it possible. So they're trying to destigmatize creatine. It's good for women. It's good for even teenagers. Like the, it's safe. And the literature suggests that and supports that. So that link down below, you will not regret it. This is a great way to low dose all the way up to high dose creatine in an effective delivery form that tastes good. So creatine gummies from Create down below, top line of the description, use that code and save 15% off. There is a metabolic interplay <clears throat> and there are few actually metabolic interplays. So the simplest one to start with is that when we drink alcohol, any amount really, it gets metabolized primarily in the liver. And one of the things that it gets metabolized into is this molecule called acetate. So research over the last 10 years, this was actually shocking and kind of upended some of the neuroscience field because they had no idea this was happening. Some of that acetate goes from the liver, travels up to the brain and fuels brain cells. So when people drink alcohol, they are developing, they end up with an alternative fuel source for brain cells. Now, if somebody is metabolically compromised and they have insulin resistance going on in their brain, alcohol can be highly rewarding because their brain isn't firing on all cylinders because of insulin resistance. They drink alcohol, that alcohol gets converted into acetate, acetate can slide into those cells, be used as fuel source, and people feel better. They'll actually say, some, and, and this is what we hear from people who develop alcoholism, I feel awake on alcohol, I feel alive, I feel better, my anxiety goes away, my depression goes away. Whereas metabolically healthy people will more often than not report, it sedates me. Alcohol sedates me, it calms me down, I'm not as clear thinking. So there's that dichotomy. And we now have science to understand why that, why actually both of those things may be true. And then from the addiction side, that's almost like a double whammy because then you're getting the the dopaminergic pathway from just the, the alcohol and the substance itself, but also just this sort of, well, I, I think better, I feel clearer, and almost like a, like, a, like a visceral, more physical, like, well, I just function better with it, and almost convincing yourself that, well, it's actually probably doing me good because I think so much clearer. So, I mean, it's almost like you're just getting hit with two stones on this one. It is. And then the other whammy, so you ask the big picture question, does alcohol impact metabolism? The other huge whammy, unfortunately, is that alcohol also gets converted into a molecule called acetaldehyde, which is toxic to mitochondria and cells. And that's its primary source of toxicity. And so when people, if people drink a massive amount and they die of alcohol poisoning, what, what, what's actually happening is that acetaldehyde levels are rising and they are poisoning the mitochondria in their cells and that can cause death. If you do it at a lesser level and just have a few drinks every day, but you're chronically drinking, or you binge drink a few times a week, you know, go out with the guys and oh, you know, party and end up having 10 drinks, you're actually damaging the mitochondria in your cells. And if you do that over time, you're actually making the brain metabolic impairment worse. So you're actually making brain metabolism worse over time. And then that fuels your need for the acetate from the alcohol to fuel your brain cells. 
and now you're screwed because yeah. you're, you're using the alcohol as a treatment to feel better and yet it's causing more and more harm and damage. That's so interesting because you know, when you hear the term a functional alcoholic, or you, like you, almost, you almost wanna blame them and say, it's a, it's a, well, you just have this distorted view of what's functional, right? But what I'm hearing is that it's not really distorted. They're legitimately feeling functional because A, they may have started with metabolic dysfunction, but they've just created so much more metabolic dysfunction that practically the only way they feel semi-normal is by functioning with alcohol. Yes. That's very scary. That's the trap. And then, I mean, when you hear someone, you hear the terms thrown around like, oh, he pickled himself with alcohol. He pick and I used to think like, oh, when someone pickles themselves by, you know, like, see the, 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 the crusty old guy that's just like kind of talking crazy because, oh, he pickled himself, right? You know, I used to think, oh, the cirrhosis, he just, he pickled his organs. It almost seems as though, like, no, 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 pickled cellular function. And that's why you have all this just multiple levels of deterioration that seem to happen. Yes. And because alcohol preferentially goes to the liver for detoxification, and that detoxification is happening in the liver, the liver is the organ most commonly affected, but the brain is a close second. Interesting. It's the liver and the brain that suffer the most. And as a, as a movement guy, I can't help but think, and this is not necessarily your wheelhouse, but it's all tied together. I mean, I just think like, you know, so many athletes, particularly even like endurance athletes are notorious for, you know, they, they drink a lot of calories, they, they really do. And it's uh, a lot of athletes in general just drink a lot of alcohol. And I just think about the metabolic impairment that happens as a result of that, that they may not even be aware of, especially as they get into their 30s and their 40s, like the amount of performance that's potentially being left on the table. I mean, obviously there's more important things at play than just how fast someone can run a marathon or whatever. There's obviously more life and death situations, but I try to stress to people, like, you know, if you're, if you're an athlete and you want optimal performance, like you can make the argument all day long that it helps you relax, it helps you sleep, it helps you wind down. No. But you know, the, the evidence is very clear on slow wave sleep and, and how it impacts that, which we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. But it, it's what I'm hearing is that it, it just validates what I've felt from a metabolic side in the body. I mean, like it just doesn't make sense. Like it, it feels like, everything preferentially has to take a back seat to what the liver can deal with because the liver has to deal with that acetaldehyde so everything else just kind of, hey, you got to go on the back burner here for a minute while we deal with this. And what does that leave you exposed to? 